Hello my soccer universe, a day after the Asian Cup, probably my second favorite continental tournament is kicking off, which is of course the AFCON, and yes I hear you, I hear you, they're taking away the favorite player from your favorite club, happens also for me, Milan also has quite some African players that are going to, 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 to the AFCON, I still enjoy this tournament very very much, I also hear you, the quality of the, of the games is not that, that great, I'd rather watch the Premier League or anything, I hear you on that. However, there's an atmosphere uh, in there that you don't get anywhere else in the world. You see African fans doing African things. Yes, the stadiums are not always full. Yes, sometimes the games are a little bit of a rough watch. I agree, but if it's good, it's very good. And what's always the best thing, and I think just the background here gives you a little uh, taste, is the jerseys. Just watching the jerseys and there will be a jersey review coming sometime soonish. I just have to see how the scheduling works out. The jerseys at, at, at the FCON are just something else and something to behold because beside the big name teams you always get some really small ones with some interesting odd weird jerseys in there. That all makes it fun to watch. And it is Africa's time to shine, an overlooked continent for all of us. So take your time, get your club head off, watch the AFCON. That's all I want to say at the beginning, because the AFCON is truly one of the funnest tournaments to watch. And especially now, the Premier League is anyway taking halfway uh, break. We have, uh, you know, there's a lot of midweek action of some, in, other, in some other leagues. You can watch the AFCON. It's right there in the evening. Yes, again, the games are not always fun to watch. <laughs> I'm fully with you. I still watch them. Because you see things that you don't see elsewhere. It is just a completely different vibe to the entire tournament. And now a little bit for then, uh, this time around the vibe is also a little bit off because I think the vibe generally in Western Africa and the Sahel is also off. Uh, I wonder if this will play anything that we have. Uh, many countries have been taken over by dictatorships. Some of them are even present at the AFCON. There's quite some tension there. I really hope this doesn't boil over. I don't want to have scenes like in 2010 when the helicopter was uh, over the fence to keep them at bay to avoid a riot. Those scenes are normal, but that's also Africa. I promise you, you will see things that you don't see anywhere else. But yeah. Let's start. Where is the tournament actually being played? Well, my jersey gives it away. Uh, the Ivory Coast or the Côte d'Ivoire, I actually prefer the um, French spelling, is the host of this year's edition. I think it's officially 23, like in Asia, but it's of course now 2024 because they wanted to pull it in in the summer, but now are going back again to have it in the winter because of the climate and after Cameroon. Now we are back at the Côte d'Ivoire. The Côte d'Ivoire is, uh, is offering us six stadiums in five cities, two in Abidjan, the biggest city. I think the capital is Yamoussoukro, which of course has also a big stadium. Then we have Bouaké, Corogo and San Pedro, uh, the other cities that are offering. And the way that the draw will happen, we'll talk about the draw in a sec. The second is that there are two groups that play in Abidjan. We are always one uh, group plays in one stadium, the, uh, the other one in the, uh, in the other states, the stadium, and then for the um, last round, two teams always have to travel. The other pairings are Yamoussoukro and Bouaké, that's for groups C and D, and then for groups E and F, we have Corogo and San Pedro. You see there's already quite some distance there, that, that, that's maybe a little bit uh, not so well done. Um, let's see also the teams that have qualified for this F AFCON. You see uh, Cote d'Ivoire is of course in there, Morocco, Senegal, Tunisia, Algeria, Egypt. You see, except, and you see that also reflected in the background to it, except for uh, whole the Senegal and for the host nation, it's a lot of Northern African teams that got into the top uh, pot, which is something that, that I will talk about. In pot 2 we see some well-known teams in Nigeria and Cameroon. We also have Mali and Burkina Faso, two of the Sahel states that are in trouble, uh, Ghana and the DRC. Uh, South Africa makes a comeback, Cape Verde, Guinea, uh, another troubled uh, part, Zambia, Equatoria, Guinea, Mauritania, then we have uh, Guinea, Bissau, uh, Mozambique, Namibia, Angola, Gambia and Tanzania, also a lot of southern teams in the last pot. And the groups are as follows, I think the Cote d'Ivoire got a very attractive group with Nigeria in there, and then with Equatoria, Guinea and Guinea, Bissau, uh, they're not neighboring countries, 
<laughs> there's a lot of guineas uh, there, um, which the two of them, the two big ones should actually move on, uh, which is the theme for almost all the other groups as well. With Egypt, Ghana, Cape Verde, Mozambique, Cape Verde can do something at times, but I think Egypt and Ghana should move on. With I actually fear that Ghana, last time around they were really, really bad and they qualified for, I don't know, for, for the World World Cup, but uh, Ghana is probably a team that could make a negative upset. Um, I think Group C is probably the most interesting. We have Senegal in there, we have Cameroon in there, um, so two real big hitters, but we have Guinea who always do well and Gambia which was a sensation the last time around. So I think this is a, a much more open group than it looks at the first uh, look. Algeria were the big favorites last time around, crashed out in the group stage. Uh, I think they want to uh, <laughs> do better this time. Burkina Faso, Mauritania and Angola I think is also relatively interesting and tight this group. Algeria though should romp through this. Um, then with Tunisia and Mali meeting again. They met, I think, now for two Afcons in a row in the group stage, and they met also in the playoffs for qualifying for World Cup, and again they meet, so three Afcons in a row. Uh, Tunisia and Mali are drawn together, and then we have the neighboring countries, South Africa and Namibia, also in interesting. And uh, huge favorites, Morocco, you see the huge bar, they are the highest rated team. This is the green uh, bars there, uh, big favorites over, over the DRC, Zambia and Tanzania. I actually want to see Morocco have qualified over the DRC for the World Cup as well, but I'm not 100% on that one. So uh, that should be an easy group for Morocco, but then it will be relatively tight who else will qualify. Let's do a group by group analysis uh, based on these ratings. And you see already uh, Group A, um, thanks to home form of the Marshall Cote Cote d'Ivoire are ahead of Nigeria, but only by a little bit. It's just one, one, one with one different difference. Both of them should qualify comfortably with 93% and 83%. I think the head-to-head -head between those two will be one of the games that you definitely want to watch, although this might actually not be a good game. I feel uh, Egypt and Ghana, also the favorites, are uh, relatively solid. Cape Verde could ha have a say for sure. In Group C, we have Senegal, Cameroon, Guinea. I said, uh, again, uh, if I look at the percentage for the round of 16, uh, it looks very similar to, uh, for instance, the Group A. I still think that Guinea and Gambia will do much better than uh, it is expected here. Um, Algeria, as I said, should qualify easily. Burkina Faso is also a known qu uh, quantity. I always worry what do the current political situation mean for them. But other than this, I think it should relatively be easy. Angola and Mauritania on the outside looking in. That's also for sure. Uh, Tunisia and Mali. Mali also one of those countries where I cannot really gauge. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think South Africa will have a big shot in there. Uh, South Africa has taken like the country itself and unfortunately a rather negative turn in terms of performances in Morocco. Very easy, the DRC and Zambia. I mean, those are um, on the African scale relatively good countries that are relatively evenly matched. So, let's see who will come out from those. If the points are happening like this, and this average points so will not happen like, like this, but it's South Africa, Zambia, Cape Verde, Equatorial Guinea, who should move on, which sets up now. And again, I've said already, Asian Cup, it's always really hard to really gauge what does this mean that uh, for instance Morocco is in group F is this good for them is this bad for them we, because we don't really know how, how how the matchups go so it's always good to make this prediction and look how the um, projected bracket when everything goes as expected pans out and we see already I mean the first one Nigeria against Cameroon both are favored for a second spot that's a barnstormer right there. Algeria against Zambia have to then then to play the winner of Nigeria Cameroon. I think that's already uh, an interesting one to start it out with. Uh, we also see that um, Egypt and Equatorial Guinea uh, and Morocco and Mali. So Egypt and Morocco are on crash course right there. And then uh, we had that out in the, in the quarterfinals last time, time, time around. This could be one of those make or break games. And then we see the winner is facing uh, against the winner of Al Algeria versus Nigeria or Cameroon. Uh, I actually think that Nigeria at the moment is a little bit overlooked. Nigeria could uh, fare quite well in this tournament. 
uh, for a reason that I will tell you just in a sec. On the lower side, we see the Cot Cocot de Vaux have a relatively easy route, at least to the semis, uh, with um, Ghana, which is a team, almost neighboring country, uh, that they should beat. Uh, and they play a third place team, in this case South Africa, should be doable for, for, for them. Senegal also, not so bad, I think Sans and Senegal have one of the clearer routes to the final. Uh, Cape Verde, yes, Tunisia is probably a tough opponent, then you have to go through the holes. But I think for, uh, for the defending chair champions, if they make it out of the group, group winners should make for a clear path into to, to the final. And they're the second highest rate team F after Morocco, so it's a Morocco-Senegal final. However, I don't quite think that Morocco might go that far for the very simple reason. Yes, the last time around we had Egypt all the way to the final, so maybe one of the North African teams will make it. But usually we have, when the Africans play in Sub-Saharan Africa, that the Sub-Saharan teams do much better than the North African teams, uh, especially from the Maghreb states. So uh, while, for instance, Algeria is rated higher than both Nigeria or Cameroon, I would give both of these the edge over Nigeria at the moment, uh, over Algeria at, 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 at the moment. And I think that against an Egypt, they might not look that bad. So always have that in mind. We have this divide in there. As I said, there are many, many factors and the Afghan is not adverse to um, upsets, which is always a fun thing to see. Um, as for the overall favorites, as I said, Morocco are the highest rated teams, they are the big favorites. Yes, they just made it to the World Cup semi-final, where Senegal only made it to the next round. Of course, they're going to be highly rated. Um, again, I would tone my expectations a little bit down, but yes, it's Morocco's to lose. If this tournament would have been played in non F Africa, I think Morocco would win it. Uh, this way, I think Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, Nigeria, I think they will have a say in that. They might have to have a say in that, although I really don't believe, for instance, very much in Cameroon itself. They are the big name team, but I don't quite believe that Cam C -C -C Cameroon are uh, that da dangerous to make it far. But maybe Cote d'Ivoire, with the home field advantage, could I see a semi-final in there for, for them. The biggest hope for, and it's not even Sub-Saharan Africa because they're out there on the west coast. I think about the big uh, hopes there of Senegal, of course. I think Sen Senegal to repeat probably not a bad chance and if Nigeria yes they lost Novik with the Boniface but I think Nigeria is loaded there's so much talent in there if they can harm her said I think Nigeria is probably the team to watch uh, which of the not so heralded teams shows uh, look after I mean um, normally I would say Mali is bound to make a deeper run uh, I think same thing goes for Burkina Faso, who do that okay, or occasionally. And maybe, you know, we see another Guinea or uh, going on a run out of nowhere. So uh, those are teams that I have the feeling that could do something. But you never know. It could also go completely the other way. Um, let's look also at the first set of fixtures. And most of the time, the fixtures are set up in such a way that we have a double header in a stadium, which uh, is really nice. Of course, it does not apply to the first set of fixtures. We have the opening game in Abidjan on Saturday in the evening against Guinea-Bissau. Uh, sold out crowd, I'm pretty sure. And then Nigeria face uh, Equatorial Guinea on the next day in the same stadium. But then the other uh, Abidjan stadium has already a double header. Egypt, the Mozambique, Ghana and Cape, and, and Cape Verde. This is also a feature of the AFCON that I think makes a whole lot of sense because you get all the fan groups in and you, they can watch two games. I would hope, I don't, I hope they're not letting them go out and then go in again, but uh, you know, it's Africa, everything can happen in Africa. Uh, we have Senegal against Gambia and Cameroon against Guinea. I think Cam uh, Cameroon against, against Guinea and Yamoussoukro is already a make or break game. And Cameron is without Onana because he plays against Spurs uh, the day before. So let's see about that. Uh, and then in the evening, we have Ango uh, Algeria. Angola should be a one side side game. Burkina Faso, more Mauritania. As I said, it's unfortunately not a uh, double header. Mali against South Africa is also a game that could already decide who will go on. Uh, Tunisia should actually easily go over Namibia. And then big favorites, Morocco, go in on Wednesday. Um, against Tanzania and the DRC against Zambia, another make or break game. So those are all make may make or break games. We have then the big matchups coming off in the second round, especially then uh, for Cote um, d'Ivoire against uh, Nigeria. I think this is probably one of the duels 
of this first round that everyone should look out for. I also think Egypt against Ghana and Senegal against Ka Cameroon, those, those will be highlight games that will be on everyone's watch list. Now, as for the coverage, I will do it a little bit like the last F. I've gone that ever, F, after every match day, I will make a highlight video. I can imagine that for the AFCON I also do short vi vi videos depending on how I watch. I know I can watch it. The kickoff times are maybe not very conducive to watching because a 9 o'clock kickoff, while it's doable, is not necessarily my favorite. Uh, so I might not watch every, every game, but I might, I can imagine giving semi regular updates on short videos. I also said I have to look at the scheduling for VAV videos and my scheduling going forward because January is always a busy month for me. But I can also imagine doing, uh, or I will definitely do a jersey re review because that's for me always a highlight of this tournament as well. In any case, who is your favorite, favorite for the AFCON? Uh, will you watch? You should watch. You absolutely have to watch the AFCON. It's one of the funnest tour tour tournaments to watch. And it's one of the tours you watch because you don't watch the action on the pitch, but off the pitch. Because something might even happen. It's Africa. I love Africa. I love this Toronto tournament. I cannot tell you how much. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon more about my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.